shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our love. An almighty fortress, Lord, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our love. You shine in the shadows. Well, good morning everyone and welcome to those of you watching on screen either now this morning or a bit later in the week if you're watching on catch up. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be here this morning and you may have noticed that Holly is with us this morning and Holly has brought family and friends. It's so lovely that you've come to see Holly's baptism. Welcome to Nikki and Gavin and all of Holly's support, support team. Wonderful. Man City, eat your heart out. Holly's got lots of people here too. Um, so my name is Penny, and I've got the privilege of baptizing Holly this morning. 
our vicar Mark is on study leave at the moment, um, but our lay ministers uh, Craig and Jess and our youth minister Rachel are leading us through this period so brilliantly, but I get to do today, so yay! So I'm a member of the church family and um, sometimes stand in for taking services. Well, we're going to begin um, by standing together, if we're able, and joining in the call to worship. I'm going to say something, and then you get to respond if, with the words in darker type, and the words will appear on the screen. And then we're going to join in a couple of songs of worship together. It's really hot, so please don't worry. If, if actually at any point you just think, actually, I just need to sit down for a little bit, please just do that. And there's glasses of water at the back as well. And if you're feeling too peculiar to go and get one yourself, just send somebody else. Say, I could do with a glass of water. Yeah? So as you're able, let's stand together for our call to worship. Today we're thinking about God being our rock dependable and strong and always there for us. These words have been said for thousands of years as people have celebrated. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Amen. As we come today, we remind ourselves of what we do. That these songs are not just songs, but signs of love for you. This is a holy moment now. Something of heaven touches us. Voices of angels all resound. We join their song. Worship God with our hands held high and our hearts bowed down. We will run, run, run through your gates of love with a shout of love. We 
Please do be seated, everyone. As we celebrate the life and love of God in Christ, we're going to join together now in a family prayer, really, and it's a prayer that's been prayed through the generations, all sorts of different occasions. It's the prayer in which Jesus uh, teaches us to call God our Father. So let's join together now as we're seated in the Lord's Prayer, and the words will come on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So now our children and young people are going to head off for your groups. Hope you have a brilliant time. God bless you. We'll see you later. Children and young people who've come to support Holly, if you'd like to join the groups after Holly's been baptised, you're very welcome to do that. Uh, see how you feel after the baptism. And um, young people who've come with Holly, um, after the baptism, if you go to the back of church, somebody with a badge will take you to the children's or young people's group. But you do need to have a parent to go with you to sign you in, or a carer, you know, not a guardian, somebody who can sign you in so that we know who we've got and we've got contact details and so on. That will make sense. So Holly, would you like to bring up your parents and your godparents and come and stand along here facing everybody? So Nikki and Gavin and Holly's godparents. And you need to be able to see the word. So anywhere along here where you can still see. Are you all right there? Are you, can you all see the screen? Is that okay? Great. Hello. Nice to see you. Hi, sweetheart. Okay. Okay. Jesus said, let the children come to me and do not stop them. So I'm going to ask everybody, will you help Holly become part of God's family? We will. So parents and godparents, you've brought Holly to baptism and you speak for Holly today. As we trust God for her growth in faith, will you promise to care for her, to pray for her and help her to follow Christ? <laughs> yes, we will. When I said that, you may not have heard, Holly went, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now Eve's going to light a candle for us. So the candle is lit, and we remember that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And we light this candle to remind us that his light shines in this dark world. In baptism, God calls us to new life. We die with Christ to all that destroys and rise to live with him forever. So therefore, I ask you, parents and godparents, do you reject evil? I reject evil. And all its many forms. And all its many forms. And all its empty promises. And all its empty promises. Do you turn to Christ? I turn to Christ. And put your trust in him. And put my trust in him and promise to follow him forever and promise to follow him forever so we have a prayer with the water here we praise you loving father for the gift of your son jesus on him you poured your spirit at his baptism in the river jordan 
He sent his followers to baptize all who turn to him. And so, Father, we ask you to bless this water, that those who are baptized in it may be cleansed in the water of life, filled with your spirit, and know themselves loved as your children, safe in Christ forever. Amen. So together, let's all affirm our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So if I may, Holly, I'm going to just hang on to you for a moment. I love your singing. It's so lovely. Yeah. So, Holly Daphne Jean, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of the cross. Do not be ashamed of Christ. You are his forever. Stand bravely with him. Oppose the power of evil and remain his faithful disciple to the end of your life. May almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness, restore in you the image of his glory and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. Holly, for you, Jesus Christ came into the world. For you, he lived and showed God's love. For you, he suffered death on the cross. For you, he triumphed over death, rising to newness of life. For you, he prays at God's right hand. All this for you, before you could know anything of it. In your baptism, the word of scripture is fulfilled. We love because God first loved us. So Eve, if you're okay to do the candle now, you're going to get given your own candle. I'm gonna give you back, I don't really want to, isn't she lovely? Here we go, go back to mum. So, Gavin, I'm going to give this to you to hold. Is that okay? There we go. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. Holly, you've received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. Oh, look, she's really looking. About to blow it out. We've got something to say now to Holly. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Baptism joins us to Christ. Christians are called to stand up for truth and justice, to show compassion to those in need, to be faithful and loving. So let us now pray for grace in guiding Holly in the way of faith. Faithful and loving God, we ask that you bless Nikki, Gavin, and all who will care for Holly and grant them your gifts of love, wisdom, and faith. Pour upon them your healing and reconciling love, and protect their home from all evil. Fill them with the light of your presence, and establish them in the joy of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. By one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. We welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same heavenly Father. 
we welcome you. Yes, let's do that, shall we? Right, okay, Holly. So we've got something for you, Holly, and for mum and dad, and something for your godparents. Let's do that. Here we go. She's itching to blow it out. Might be an idea if she does, actually, so we don't set the church on fire. I don't know what you think, but maybe that's good. And I'm so sorry, I'm not sure who's who of godparents. Have a look and decipher who should have. Is that all right? Thank you. Thanks ever so much. That's great. Well, children and young people who've come with Holly, if you'd like to join the children's groups, please go to the back with an adult with you and um, you'll be taken to the appropriate group for your age. The rest of us, we're going to stand and sing together. And if you're happy to bring Holly round with me, maybe Holly would like to meet everybody yeah. and everybody can look at this gorgeous child. <laughs> so let's stand to worship again. And thank you very much, everybody. If you're okay to go back to your places, is that okay? And then we'll have a little walk around and say hi. Is that okay?
We're going to continue in prayer together, and Melissa's going to come and lead us in our prayers this morning. Melissa. Thank you, Penny. When I say, Lord, hear us, could you respond with, Lord, graciously hear us? Let's have a quick practice. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Okay, let us pray. Holy Father, we come here before you today to worship your holy name and to bring to you our petitions. We pray for the church in all her glory, the bride of Christ. May we come together to worship you and grow in our love for you and show you our devotion. Lord, hear us. Lord. We pray for those who are affected by the wildfires in Canada and help us to practice ways to look after our planet, which is in our stewardship. Bless our King Charles III and all those in position of authority. 
May you inspire all of our politicians to place the good of society first in their hearts and work together for the future of our country. Lord, hear us. We also pray for our local community and the church that we go to and ask for your loving support for Mark, our vicar, on his study leave and Steve and Sylvie on their mission trip in Africa. Lord, hear us. We bring now before you all those who suffer that we know, the sick, the bereaved, and the oppressed. We call them to mind now and talk to you in our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, and lastly, Lord, we pray for the Christians everywhere. Be with those who suffer persecution and be with all of us in our daily walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. One or two notices to share. Um, one of our church wardens, Glynis, is going to come up because we've got some bands of marriage to publish. Wonderful, Glynis. You. Yes, as church warden, we get the privilege when the vicar is away to actually publish the bands of marriage, which is great. So I published the bands of marriage between Robert Paul Thorpe and Kylie Marie Colaluca, both of St. Peter and St. Paul Tunbridge, between Alex Redfern and Andrea Iona Tarasescu, both of this parish. If anyone knows any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Let's pray for these couples. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Robert and Kylie, Alex and Andrea have decided to be married in a church. And we ask that you will bless their preparations, that you will be with them in their, uh, wedding, on their wedding day, and also throughout their lives, that they may grow closer to you and know your love, as well as their love for each other. All this we ask in your name. Amen. Thank you. Um, this evening, six o'clock, refreshments are being served before the plugged in um, more informal service this evening. If you're able to join, please do come along. Everybody very welcome. Six o'clock refreshments and there's a guest leading that plugged in more informal service um, this evening. I think that is it for notices. You know we often ask for volunteers. This week we're saying yay, some fantastic volunteers are going to be collecting food on a Friday evening and bring it ready for the um, community food larder on a Saturday morning. So that's so brilliant. And just to mention, if you're not aware, there's a um, community cafe here on a Tuesday morning between 10 o'clock and 1 o'clock. Everybody welcome. And on Thursday morning, there are lots of children's activities as well on a Thursday. And it happens on a Saturday as well. So if you're in the area and able just to drop in, Everybody's so welcome to any of those um, community cafes. Roland is going to bring us our Bible reading now. Thanks, Roland. Our reading this morning is from Psalm 62, which you can find on page 579 in the Church Bibles, page 579, Psalm 62, verses 1 to 8. 
Truly, my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. How long will you assault me? Would all of you throw me down? This leaning wall, this tottering fence, surely they intend to topple me from my lofty place. They take delight in lies. With their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. Yes, my soul finds rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. This is the word of the Lord. Should we just have a moment of quiet together? Amen. So, I don't know, were you watching the match yesterday? I watched a great match yesterday, but it was in the afternoon. It was the French um, uh, final, tennis. And on, uh, on Thursday, I watched the um, semi-final of the tennis, and um, it was gripping, absolutely gripping. And a woman I'd never seen before called Karolina Muchova, she was phenomenal, and she made it to the final. And Chris Evert was commentating on Thursday afternoon. She won the French Open tennis seven times, I think. And um, I was thinking about this sermon. I was multitasking. So I was thinking about God is our rock. And suddenly Chris Evert, she gets very excited if somebody plays really well. She suddenly said, Carolina is rock solid on her ground strokes. I was like, woo, there's my opening illustration. And I just whispered to Jonathan, my husband, were Man City's defence any good last night? And he said, yes. Yeah. So there's our second illustration. <laughs> Rock solid. Carolina, any ball she got back somehow. Man City didn't let any in, did they? Clean sheet, that's what we call it. I'm not usually a Man City fan, but I'm pretending today. <laughs> Rock solid dependable, won't collapse, not flaky. It's usually great to have rock solid defense, isn't it? Not great to have rock solid in every situation. I was thinking about cake. If somebody says it's rock solid, you're kind of like, yeah, great. Okay, over to you. Would you like one? Tough, strong, reliable. So Roland read for us from that Psalm about God. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He's my fortress. I shall never be shaken. Visual aid, I brought a small rock because they're quite heavy. No weakness, just strength, reliability. And then the psalmist says, he is my mighty rock, my refuge, so God isn't only strong and reliable, he offers that strength and reliability to us. He's my mighty rock. He's my refuge. Dependable and indestructible. The psalmist says, power belongs to you, God, and with you, Lord, is unfailing love. So God's love for Holly, look, she's all peaceful and sleeping. She's completely secure in the love that she's held in. God's love for Holly will never fail. God's never going to change his mind about Holly or be in a bad mood or had a bad day. 
With you, Lord, is unfailing love. His love is unstoppable, constant. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, Paul teaches us. And like a rock, the love of God underpins everything. It's beneath us. I was chatting with an older Christian a couple of weeks ago and said, I'm going to be baptising Holly, talking about God being our rock. And she said, well, he's always there. Always there for us. So I was feeling keen preparing to preach to you, so I looked up the geology of Tunbridge. I thought, this is good. I can say it's this rock and it's solid and it's always there. But I got a bit worried, actually, because there's loads of sand and clay under Tunbridge. I was thinking, oh, dear. I, um, anyway, I refer you to geologists in the uh, congregation who know a lot more than me. But there's rocks somewhere, isn't there? Like, there's high rocks in Tunbridge Wells, yeah? And when we go to Sainsbury's or to the train station down Tunbridge High Street, we don't have to worry, thinking, look, it's a bit sand and clay. Is the high street still going to be there? We don't have to think about rock. It's there. We don't have to create God or conjure God up. There, solid, unfailing love, dependable. The writer of this psalm had a time of being under pressure, and it seems that's when they wrote this psalm. Under attack, feeling vulnerable, they say, how long will you assault me? Would all of you throw me down this leaning wall, this tottering fence? They've got enemies who delight in lies, enemies who are hypocrites. With their mouths they bless, but in their hearts they curse. And so it's in this situation of vulnerability of people out to get them, that the psalmist reminds us, God is our refuge, a mighty rock, and encourages us, pour out your hearts to him. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. So this love of God, this presence of God that underpins everything, we are welcome to pour out what's really going on, whether it's exam pressure or work pressure, whether perhaps we're a teacher and it feels relentless, it's never going to end. Perhaps it's our responsibilities as a carer weigh heavily on us or very challenging, difficult relationships or overwhelming financial issues. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. The same time I spoke to the um, very experienced Christian lady who said he's always there, another Christian, we were talking about God being our rock, she said God can take anything. So when we pour out our hearts to him, it may be anger that we're feeling, it may be fear, it may be difficult to say what exactly it is, but we can bring the whole swirling mess to God our struggles, our experiences of life, maybe things that we regret, that we wish we hadn't done. She said, God can take anything. Pour out your hearts to him, the psalmist says. And we can do that with what's really going on. No pretense necessary. Yes, my soul, says the psalmist, find rest in God. We can pour our hearts out, and as Holly held in loving arms, she's resting in that love. In the heat of the desert, I'm talking about this as if I know this, I don't really, but in the heat of the desert, if there's a massive great rock, you can sit in its shade, can't you? There's a hymn writer who was in the Mendips, it's this kind of stone actually in the Mendip Hills. And um, he wrote this hymn, Rock of Ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. The story goes, I don't know if it's true, the story goes that there was a massive storm and he sheltered, there was a sort of cleft in the rock, like a sort of fissure, a sort of break in the rock, and he sheltered there. And he had that sense of being protected, almost like Christ's protective love around us, around Holly. 
I'll take the storms on me and you're sheltered within me. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. The protection that Christ offers, the salvation, the healing love, the mercy that he gives, offers to all of us all the consequences of the evil that he takes upon himself so that we might be free of guilt and shame. Rock of ages, cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. And then what about Jesus' teaching about building a house on the rock? Did any of you sing that song, you know, wise man built his house upon the rock? Oh, I have to stay so the camera can see. Did you ever sing that? You know, you had to do all of that? I never did because I never went to Sunday school, but I've seen other children doing it. And then, um, and then, was it the silly man? Foolish, foolish, thank you. Somebody went to Sunday school. Foolish man, do you go like this for the foolish man? House on the sand. Anyway, I do remember this bit. The rain came down and the flood went up. Do you remember that? Rain came down and the flood. And then this is a bit I think children really enjoy, isn't it? And the house on the sand went, <clears throat> oh, sorry. Okay. So, okay, so the gist of the story is build your house upon the rock. When the storms come, whatever the storms may be, difficulties, problems, issues, troubles, you want your house on the rock. And this is what Jesus says. He who hears these words of mine, Jesus said, and puts them into practice is like a wise builder who built their house upon a rock. And he says it, Matthew wrote it down in Matthew's Gospel, he says at the end of a whole load of amazing teaching, it's in Matthew chapter 5 and 6 and 7, they're sometimes called the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, it includes that prayer that we prayed about forgiving others as God forgives us. Lots of teaching about living generously, not worrying so much, but taking our troubles to God. Not judging other people. Not seeking revenge, loving our enemies. Not following false teachers, looking for what the fruit of their lives is. And Jesus says, if you follow my teaching, if you live in the way that I'm showing you, that I'm explaining to you, it's like building your house on rock, the rock of Christ's love for us, Christ's life given for us, rock of ages cleft for me. This is how the, the hymn goes on, be of sin, the double cure, be of sin, the double cure, save me from its guilt and power. So today, as we celebrate Holly's baptism, we celebrate God's total commitment to Holly and to all of us. Unchanging and solid and steadfast, that love of God for Holly and for all of us. His death and resurrection for Holly and for all of us. We pray that she may flourish and grow in the love of God for her. We pray that Holly may be able to pour out her heart to the God who she knows loves her. May she build her life as a follower of Jesus. In my pocket, I have a stone. Because at one place in the Old Testament, God says to his people, I'm going to give you hearts of flesh not stone. So as followers of Jesus, we want to be not rigid and hard, inflexible, self-righteous. We want to love others, be open to God speaking to us now. Maybe there are new understandings for us to learn, new people to be open to. He says, don't harden your hearts. Holly clearly has a warm heart, doesn't she? A heart of flesh. May each of us allow God to protect us from hardness of heart and have hearts of flesh, not of stone. 
And so may we know the joy that God gives, the gift of every day, underpinned by the rock-solid love of God. Whatever life may bring us, and life brings much pain, as many of you know better than me, may we know that steadfast love of God, our rock and our redeemer. So if I may, I'm going to finish with a prayer that comes from another psalm. Let's just be quiet a moment and then I'll pray it. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, let's join together in singing to praise and to worship the God who loves us with an unchanging love. If you're able, please stand to sing, but if it's too hot, do feel free to stand, sit down, just as is appropriate for you.
We offer our lives and our love to God in all different ways, caring for others, uh, in our prayers, in how we approach each day, and in our sung worship, and also in giving financial gifts. So we're going to pray together an offertory prayer, which is going to come on the screen. And in this prayer, we can offer God everything it is that we want to honor him with. Let's pray together. God of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I, um, I mentioned I had a, a stone in my pocket, a small one, because this would not have been good. Um, there's a basket of stones here, and I don't think this will be relevant for, for many of us, but if you kind of think, oh, actually, I'd quite like a stone just to put in my pocket, just to remind me this week that God is my rock. His love for me never fails. I can pour out my heart to him. Whatever may be useful for you, if you want to take one, please do and just pop one in your pocket. We always finish our service with um, drinks as um, tea, coffee, cold drinks. If your young people have gone to one of the groups, if you could um, uh, meet them, pick them up, that would be great. And it's been really lovely to worship with you and with Holly and all of you as her family and friends today. That's great. We'll just finish with a final prayer together and then there's a response which will come on the screen. The God of all grace, who called you to eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.